Hello, listeners. This is Kat. Welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This is the continuation of Swallow the Stars. This will be Part 32, Chapter 32, entitled Seeking Refuge. Monday afternoon finds Shoda fully healed and surprisingly well-rested, doing his least favorite thing, observing students just on the off chance they managed to hurt themselves or burn down a building. Yes, this is frequently his job as a teacher, specifically as a first-year homeroom teacher, but he gets paid to work certain hours of the day, and those hours do not cover the time right now, which means that he's watching three students, three problem children, out of nothing more than a desire to not have to bring them to see Shizenshi-san, who would undoubtedly scold him and whack him with her cane if they got hurt. The past few days had gone by quite slowly. Shoda, Hizashi, and Izuku were all recovering, and Izuku... Fuck. My kid had regressed again. Shota hadn't wanted Hizashi to tell him about the dead villains and the ruined zone, but ultimately lying to him would have been the worst, if the truth had eventually come out. So, all of Thursday was quiet, most of it spent with the three of them on the sofa watching movies or reading, especially after Izuku had returned home from his session with Kiyumi-san. He'd had a nightmare that night, and he hadn't fallen asleep again even after he'd calmed down. Friday had been a little better. Izuku went on a run in the morning and talked more in the afternoon. Shinzo came over in the late afternoon as per usual, though Shota hadn't allowed them to train since Shinzo was still recovering, and he'd brought Shinzo home that night to sleep in his own house. Maybe both boys would have slept better if they'd been together, but Shota couldn't say that to Keita-san's face, and she had wanted her son home. He could understand that, and the boys just had to live with it. And Saturday had been surprisingly normal, if extremely boring and a bit quieter than usual. Thankfully, by Sunday afternoon, everything was fine, or at least it seemed fine. Izuku was writing in his notebook or doing low-impact exercises on the balcony. Shota had invited Namuri and Tazashi over for family time, or whatever, and then Izuku had asked if Shota and Tazashi would mind helping some of his classmates with their quirks in preparation for the sports festival in a week and a half. Which is why Shota finds himself now in Jim Delta, watching over Izuku, Shinso, and Todoroki while Hizashi works with Kaminari on the side of the open space. Are you sure? Todoroki asks, his face is expressionless as always. Shota has been keeping a close eye on him from the day of the quirk apprehension test. He's heard too much shit about Endeavor to not, but his tone has a curl of hesitancy. I know you... you said it's not like his, but... Oh, that's a red flag. Izuka nods rapidly and he pulls his notebook out of his bag. I'm sure, he promises, thumbing through the pages in search of the right ones. Here, see? He holds it out toward Todoroki. Problem child. Shota calls, drawing Izuku and Shinzo's attention immediately to him, and much lower but still inevitably, Todoroki's as well. Ah, good. They're learning. He walks over slowly, to where the three of them are sitting on the floor in a loose triangle and sits himself down between Shinzo and Todoroki. They scoot over a bit to make room for him, Todoroki a little further than Shinzo. Talk me through it. I'm not going to be much help if I don't know. Oh, right. Izuku takes the notebook back from Todoroki and scans his eyes over the pages. Right, so I know I talked about this briefly already, but I noticed at the recommendation exam that Todoroki-kun was only using ice attacks to maneuver instead of fire, and it was obvious to me that he had to have a fire quirk because of the heterochromia and the bisection of his hair, so I confronted him about it, and we had a conversation, and anyway, I decided to do some analysis on his quirk. Wait, Shinzo leans forward. You just walked up to him and what, told him off for not using his fire? Izuka smacks his notebook against Shinzo's arm. Shut up. But... Yes, I did. Shinzo laughs so hard that he rocks backwards, head tipping up to the ceiling. You just told me you talked to him and got his number. You never said anything about a confrontation. He was quite intense. Todoroki says, eyes glittering with otherwise unshed mirth. Okay, shut up. I saw what wants an explanation, not a dramatic retelling. Izuka's voice is rather calm for how hard he's blushing, but Shoda decides not to call him on it. I'd already done an analysis of Endeavor's quirk about five years ago, I think. It's one of the later notebooks, so it was definitely fairly recent, at least, so I already knew that Endeavor produces flame by burning oxygen in the air. His skin creates a spark, and then all he has to do is tell it where to go. There has to be at least an element of pyrokinesis to his quirk as well, though I think it's more than that, given his stupid mustache and beard, but he doesn't do a very good job of being precise on his villain takedown, so it's either a weak or underdeveloped aspect. Todoroki makes a noise that very well could be a laugh, though he's quick to hide it behind his fist. Somewhere behind Shota, Kaminari yells, That's so cool! Shota doesn't look, though. That's Hizashi student now, and Shota wants no part of it. He doesn't need to have a fourth problem child added to his apparently increasing list. Three is plenty. Izuku, thankfully, is on a roll, and doesn't pause for the distractions. 
but I figured that Todoroki-kun's activation couldn't be the same because he has a nice production element to his quirk on top of the fire, so I spent like three days digging around the internet looking for any video evidence of his mother using her quirk. You did what? Todoroki asked, stiffening up and looking at Izuku with fear, hesitancy, hope, red flag. Izuka stops, and his hands immediately tighten around the edges of his notebook as he ducks his head down and his shoulders curl up. Sorry, I suppose I should have asked you, but you don't really answer all my texts all the time, and we didn't have a lot of time between classes to talk properly, and I wanted to get this done for you as soon as possible. Todoroki's hands are clenched in fists, but he doesn't look angry, which is good because Shinto looks about three seconds away from launching himself across their loose circle and wringing Todoroki's neck if he says the wrong thing. Do you... do you still have the video? Izuku nods slowly. Can you send it to me? I haven't... He trails off with a glance at Shota, worrisome. I haven't seen my mother in about ten years. Never mind worrisome, that's another red fucking flag. But Shota keeps his calm and moves his eyes instead to Izuku as a hand over his mouth. Uh, todoroki I'm sorry, I really should have asked. Yes, of course, I'll send you the video. After the lesson, Shota says, effectively stopping Izuku from reaching into his bag for his phone. Focus is required when experimenting with quirks. You should know that. Izuka doesn't wince, but he does duck his eyes down. Right. Sorry, Dad. Problem, children. Shota reaches across the space and ruffles Izuka's hair. All good. Everyone okay to continue? Shinzo nods. Shota has a guess that he's only here to spend more time with Izuku as opposed to actually practicing his quirk or helping at all, but Shota doesn't mind that either. You have to be blind not to see the charming effect Shinzo's mere presence has on Izuku and in a situation where destructive quirks are being experimented with, Shinzo's ability to call Izuku on his bullshit, and recklessness is a good quality to have around. Izuku holds out a hand and a thumbs up. Eventually, Todoroki nods as well. Yes, I'm all right. Sorry for interrupting, Izuku. It's fine, Todoroki-kun, Izuku assures, looking like he wants to reach out and touch his friend, maybe take his hand or squeeze his shoulder. He doesn't, though, and instead looks to Shota like he isn't sure how to get back on track. That's fine. Shota's here for guidance, after all. What did you find out about her quirk? He asked, settling himself down with his hands on his knees. Right. Izuka straightens his spine and glances down at his notebook for a moment. Todoroki Rei, Todoroki-kun's mom, has a quirk that lets her freeze water. At its base level, that's all it is, but in the sole video I found, it was just shaky cam footage from a phone. I'm pretty sure she was making a skating rink out of a road. It wasn't raining, but the ice was thick, and afterwards it looked like the air got colder. From that, I came to the conclusion that she figured out how to use her quirk to freeze the water content in the air, but of course, the water content of our atmosphere is like 5 or 6% at best, so she probably has some sort of hydrokinesis or hydroproduction element to her quirk, allowing her to move or produce water vapor at will. Given the amount of ice that she produced in the video, I'm willing to bet it's hydroproduction. And she can flood an area with water vapor and then control where the ice forms within it. Shota doesn't raise his eyebrows or react in any external way to Izuka's deductions. This is far from the first time that he's listened to his son break down a quirk with just the barest bit of visual information. And the most impressive part is that Shota knows that all this analysis was almost instantly registered in Izuka's brain. That the most time-consuming thing Izuka does with this analysis is write it down or figure out how to communicate it in a way that other people can understand. The analysis lessons that Shota had given to Izuka when they first started training had never been about improving the quality of his analyses. It had always been about teaching him how to communicate them. Because eventually, Izuka's going to be in the field, and he's going to have to learn how to say something like water vapor production, ice creation, and manipulation, long-range advantage, so get in close, and be satisfied with it. But here, in the echo chamber of Jim Delta, Izuka has a floor and he can use it however he wants, and Todoroki is hanging onto every word with wide eyes and a slightly open mouth. You got all that from a shaky phone video? He asks, and all is so evident in his voice that Shota looks away, making eye contact instead with a smirking Shinso. Oh, I, um, yeah, I mean, Izuka swallows audibly, and he's blushing and looking up at the ceiling when Shota turns back to him. I could have done a lot more if the video was any longer. Five seconds isn't much to go on. Shinso gives a low whistle. Holy shit, Izuku. That has to be a new record for you, right? Shortest video for analysis purposes ever? Izuka nods just once. Even the old heroes who didn't have videos still had entire sections dedicated to them in the books I read. This was literally all I could find on Todoroki-kun's mom. I'm sure it's by design, Todoroki says. Please don't think you need to apologize or anything. My father always kept my mother a secret. Fuck, stop, with all the red flags, Jesus Christ. Todoroki. Shota shifts a little so he can give his full attention to the boy. Thankfully, Todoroki turns to him as well and nods to indicate that he's paying attention. 
After this, if you're comfortable with it, I would like it if you told me about your family situation. He has heard Izuku's guesses, but he wants to hear it confirmed from Todoroki. When Todoroki starts to close himself off, Izuku reaches out and grabs his hand, giving it a tight squeeze. Todoroki-kun, look at me. It takes a moment, but he does. Izuku's smile is soft and bright like a sunrise. Dad can help. Maybe he can't fix it completely, whatever's wrong, but he can help. And he's not going to blame you, believe me. If he was going to blame anyone for terrible things that happened that were out of his control, it would be me, but he adopted me instead, so I think you should tell him. This kid. Todoroki spends a long moment staring at Izuku before his eyes move across their little circle to Shinso. And you? Shinso blinks. What, you want my opinion? Yes, Izuku trusts you implicitly. I would like to know what you think about this. With a shrug, Shinso straightens up a little and glances at Shota. Look, there are a lot of shitty adults in the world. He turns back to Todoroki with raised eyebrows. I think we all know that, so there's no reason to dance around it, but aizawa san isn't one of them. He's a bit of a hard-ass, sure, but that's just because he wants us to not die, you know. Before I met aizawa and say no adult ever listened to me besides my parents, but he listened and he helped. aizawa Sensei and Yabata-sensei did everything they could to help me when they absolutely didn't need to. Shota could argue, could say that they did need to, because they're adults and decent human beings, but that's the point Shinso's trying to make. That it's a sad reality that not all adults think that way. Todoroki takes a moment to think, and then he turns to Shota with a small nod. Okay, I'll tell you. After this, though, we need to focus, right? Shota nods. Unless you want to skip practice today. No. Todoroki squeezes Izuka's hand and then pulls away. I want to hear Izuku out and test his theories today before I lose the nerve. Good kid. Brave kid. Okay. Izuku, go ahead and continue, Shota says with a small wave of his hand. Izuku hesitates for a moment, scanning his eyes across Todoroki first, then Shota, then Shinso, and finally back to Todoroki. He nods a few times and his lips move like he's mumbling to himself, though no sound comes out. Eventually he smiles. Right. So, to recap, Endeavor has a pyrokinetic quirk that includes... A way to make sparks with his skin. Todoroki Ray likely has a hydroproduction quirk. That includes cryokinetic elements for directing our eyes. But Todoroki-kun does not have two quirks. He isn't both pyrokinetic and cryokinetic. That would be an insane leap in evolution. No, quirks don't work like that. There's always the quirk itself, and then what the quirk needs to operate. Hizashi, for example. Who? Todoroki asks quietly. Yamada-sensei. Shinso supplies with a gesture of his thumb across the room. Has a voice quirk. It's not scream or yell, it's voice, which means that it has to come equipped with a vocal cord mutation to allow for the changes. Hitoshi has a slight mutation in his vocal cords too, but it activates differently. And Aizawa has a mutation in the occipital lobe of his brain, probably all the way down to his ocular nerves as well. But anyway, the point is here that there's a lot of moving parts that make up a quirk, and Todoroki-kun's quirk is half cold, half hot. It's not half ice, half fire, which is important. Izuka turns to Todoroki and holds out his hands. Take my hands, please. After a brief second of hesitation, Todoroki does so. This hand is colder. He holds up Todoroki's right hand. And this one's warmer. He holds up Todoroki's left hand. More importantly, they're both different temperatures than my own. Todoroki's core temperature, and I do mean core, as in right down the middle, is a normal 37 degrees Celsius, but the further away you get from the center, the colder or the warmer he becomes, so hands and feet mostly. They're your main points of quirk activation, right? Todoroki nods. That's correct. Izuka releases Todoroki's hands with a quiet thanks and then turns back to their small circle. On top of that, Todoroki-kun has told me that he's fireproof to his own flames, but he does get frostbite if he overuses his quirk. That's with overuse, though. The ice doesn't hurt him immediately. I would bet that the overuse of his flames would result in heat stroke as well, but human skin both freezes and burns, right? Endeavor has those stupid flames on his face, but he's always in control of them, and they never actually touch his skin. And in the video of Todoroki-kun's mom... She was wearing gloves, despite the eye seeming to come from her hands, so I think that Todoroki-kun's quirk is as follows. Before Izuka can dive into his theory, Shinso shoves a water bottle into his hand, gives him a very pointed look, sheepish but relenting, Izuka takes a drink and then links his hand with Shinso's. Okay. My theory is that Todoroki-kun's quirk mutation is a high tolerance to extreme temperatures, which makes sense because his temperature is so varied throughout his entire body. He's constantly fluctuating through multiple temperatures, and his body would have to be resistant to the extremes as well. And for his actual quirk, I think that he produces a gas or a vapor that is reactive to either extreme temperatures or rapid temperature changes. The activation points come from Todoroki's hands and feet because they're the hottest and coldest parts of him. The production of a vapor or a gas would also make sense with how little control he has right now with directing ice. Izuka turns to Todoroki. You were very precise during the battle trial when you only froze the top floor, but I think 
that that was because you directed your gas up there. The attack itself was unnecessarily large, when you could have gotten away with simply freezing the villain team, given that Shoji-kun could have provided you with an exact room location. Todoroki ducks his head in what could be embarrassment, but Shota is far more interested in the analysis as it could just laid out. None of the UA staff, including Shota himself and goddamn Nezu, had ever looked at Todoroki and thought that his quirk was anything other than ice and fire production. But Izuku had broken down all the quirks of Todoroki's father and mother, watched the way Todoroki used his ice, and decided that everyone else was wrong, and he would prove it to them. Shota so proud of his son that he could burst with it. Do you have a way to test this? Shota asked, putting an elbow on his knee so that he can prop his chin in his palm. I do. Izuku nods, excited enough for all of them, and bounces to his feet. Can you two? He points at Shinso and Shota. Go stand over against that wall. Shota gets to his feet with a nod and walks over to lean against the wall. Shinso takes up residence beside him, and shoved into his pockets. Great. Todoroki-kun, come with me. Izuku walks perpendicular to the wall and stops at what's probably an arbitrary point, setting Todoroki up to face the direction he wants. Hizashi! Kaminari! Just a heads up that Todoroki's going to be using his quirk and things might get cold. Sounds good, little listener. Hizashi shouts back with a big wave. Izuku turns back to Todoroki. Okay, so we all know that you can produce big waves of ice usually in a cone formation. He demonstrates with his hands. It's smaller near your activation point and then it spreads out, so what I'm going to do is have you imagine yourself doing just that. Please, not too big, just given that there's other people in the room. Do whatever you would normally do, but don't freeze anything. No ice production, just everything else. Can you try? With his brows pinched a little in clear confusion, Todoroki nods. I can try. It's incredibly boring to watch, but Shota pays close attention as Todoroki's eyes flit across the space in front of him, his expression serious as he concentrates on his assigned task. Okay, he says after a few moments. I have it visualized, where I want the ice to go. He gestures vaguely with his hands, giving a rough shape of a cone straight in front of him. Shota casually, just in case, grabs Shinzo by the arm and slides him a meter or so to the side, away from the flare of the indicated area. Izuku nods and takes off his right glove before holding out his hand. For a moment, it doesn't look like anything happens at all, but then Shota's eyes catch on the unnatural glint of the light, a shifting, swirling warp of the gym's visuals, right in the center of where Todoroki said his eyes will go. It's only there for a moment, less than two seconds, and then Izuka slides his glove back on and it vanishes. Freeze it, he says, eyes trained forward. The fingers of Todoroki's right hand splay out in a smooth, fast motion, and then the entire quarter of the gym is covered in ice. Wait, no. In the center of the widest part of the cone is a hole. It's a little jacket around the edges, but it's about two meters in diameter. There's no ice at all anywhere near the center of it. Shota looks to Izuku, who's beaming at Todoroki. See? Izuku asks, practically bouncing on his toes. I... I do see, but... Todoroki swallows his eyes, blinking rapidly. But I don't really understand. Izuku. Shota calls for his attention as he walks over to the ice and hops over it into the circle. It's freezing cold in the middle of this ice. But there's... Really no ice anywhere inside of this hollowed-out two-meter hole. He hops back out, not feeling like getting frostbite today. You put a black hole down, didn't you? Right here? Mm-hmm. Izuku runs over to Shota and jumps up onto the ice. He slips, but catches his balance quickly. I dropped it before Todoroki froze it, though, which means... The black hole didn't clear away the ice. Todoroki says shock splayed all over his face. It cleared away something else. Izuku nods frantically, laughter and delight spilling off of him in waves. See? Isn't this cool? We could probably bottle up whatever substance you produce and burn it with a normal lighter or something, Todoroki-kun. It's your quirk. It's your power. Yours alone. And Todoroki just sits down and puts his head in his hands. He doesn't look like he's crying. Just like his whole world tilted suddenly, so Shota leaves him be. Izuku jumps off the ice and runs over to him, though, and Shinzo joins after a moment, too. With a heavy sigh, Shota walks over to the wall and pulls out his phone. Just in case. Do you have some time available for a conversation? Probably soon. Depending on the subject matter, I could find myself willing to make time. Todoroki Shoto has said some concerning things about his family in my presence. He is going to tell me more about it here in a few minutes. I might need to see if you can manage to make him a ward of the school, given the whole number two hero issue. I see. I will look into it. Please let me know if you are for sure stopping by. I'm assuming Zuko-kun will be with you as well. Likely Shinzo, too. T for five, then. Understood. With a glance at his gaggle of problem children to make sure they're all still okay, they are from what he can see. Shota then walks across the gym to where Hizashi is instructing Kaminari. Can I interrupt for a second? He asks, watching from a safe distance as Kaminari shoots a line of arcing electricity from one hand to the other. Sure, 
as Ashi says, flashing Kaminari a set of finger guns. Keep doing that, listener. You're doing great. I'm just going to go talk to your grumpy homeroom teacher for a moment. Kaminari nods, but doesn't say anything, completely focused on his task. What's up? Izashi asks as he comes to stop in front of Shoda. He must see something on Shoda's face, because he casts his voice lower when he follows up with, Did something happen? Are the kiddos okay? Shoda pushes out a slow breath. For now, he says, voice just as low to keep the conversation away from prying ears. All signs point to a really heavy conversation, though. If we suddenly disappear from here, don't worry about it. I'll fill you in later. Just wanted to give you a heads up if I end up dragging them all to Nezu's office. Izashi winces. Todoroki? Yeah. Hopefully he trusts me enough to help him. Fuck, hopefully I can help him. Shota tugs on his captured woman and looks over his shoulder, once again checking on the kids. It's not that he doesn't trust them, it's just that he's paranoid. A trait he's always had, but has become worse since raising Izuku. Nothing like an impossible-to-track-down cluster of evil scientists to bring out Shota's worst possible traits. Izashi sets a hand on his shoulder and squeezes. If you need to take them somewhere else, that's fine. Do what you have to do. He looks past Shota for a moment and smiles. You can leave the ice, too. Might be fun to see what Kaminari can do with it. Shota drags in a breath, lets it out, and drags in another. Yeah, I might do that. Thanks, Zashi. I'll let you know how it goes. He pats the hand on his shoulder before stepping out of his Ashi's grip to return to his students. Shinzo's the first to look up at his approach, which is surprising because it's usually Izuku. Oh, Izuku's left side is facing Shota right now. Fucking shit. Shota still needs to punch Yagi for that. Everything all right? Shinzo asks, and that question finally brings Izuku and then Todoroki's attention to him. Shota nods. Todoroki, if you're still up for that conversation, we can go somewhere more private for it. Todoroki's gaze slides past Shota for a moment before he nods once, slowly. All right. Can, can we continue practicing later? Tomorrow, Shota says. You have a week and a half before the sports festival. You don't need to push yourself to train after this. Todoroki looks like he's about to say something that's going to make Shota even more upset, so he's quick to cut him off. I am putting a stop to training for today. You can pick up where you left off tomorrow. Yes, Sensei, Todoroki says. Good. Follow me. Shota leads them out of Gym Delta and across a short stretch of campus grounds to the main building. There's hardly anyone around at this time of day. Anyone who hasn't gone home yet has sequestered themselves off into training areas around the campus, so the hallways are blessedly empty and silent. The only thing Shota does on the way is text Nezu again to let him know which meeting room they're going to be in. Then he keeps his chin tucked into his capture weapon and then carries on. Once they're all settled in around the table, in a meeting room, does Shota turn to Todoroki with a soft wave of his hand? Whenever you're ready. Todoroki holds Shota's gaze. Do you know what quirk marriages are? Shota does, and his already bad feelings about this conversation take a deep nosedive. It doesn't get better. Todoroki lays it all out. The arranged marriage between his parents, endeavors dismissal of children that he didn't think were strong enough, the death of Todoroki's eldest brother, the mental break of his mother that she suffered, and the abuse that Endeavor put Todoroki through under the guise of training. And Todoroki says all of it like it's normal, because it has been as normal for fifteen years. Fuck. Fuck. Shota's phone buzzes in his pocket, and he digs it out to see a message waiting from Nezu. That's enough to make a case if he wants it. I'll come to you. Great. Now, how to broach this? Todoroki. Shota says careful with his words and his tone. He doesn't want to seem any different than normal, but... He wants Todoroki to know that he's been listening, that he is listening, and that he wants to do something about this. On a scale of one to ten, one being not at all, and ten being very, how comfortable are you at home? How do you mean? And isn't that just telling us fuck? Izuku saves Shota from fumbling around because Izuku is a good, no-nonsense kid who has already built a rapport with Todoroki. Do you like living at home? Izuku asks after clearing his throat of the threat of tears. He looks sad still, but... More than that, he looks furious, the anger behind his eyes, barely contained. If you could leave, if you could live anywhere else, away from Endeavor, would you? Oh. Todoroki looks from Shota to Izuku and then back again. I don't like living at home. If it was a thing that could happen, I would gladly live anywhere else, but it isn't, so... He shrugs. Why isn't it something that can happen? Shota asks, tilting his head. Todoroki gives him a look like he's an idiot, which fair, under normal circumstances... Because he's the number two pro hero, because his lawyers would shove NDAs at me and anyone else involved, and that's even if anyone believes me. I believe you, Shota says. Izuku believes you. Shinzo believes you. The door clicks open and Nezu walks in, followed closely by his secretary. I believe you as well, Todoroki-kun. 
Shima-san, would you please set the tea platter on the table? You don't have to worry about staying any later. I apologize for keeping you so long. Once the secretary is gone, Nezu hops onto a chair, and then the table itself, to pour a cup of tea for everyone. Please, help yourselves, he says with a wave of his paw to the pile of cookies. Izuku accepts immediately with a quiet but genuine, Thank you, Nezu-sensei. Nezu hops back onto one of the chairs and stands there while he sips his tea. Now, Todoroki-kun, are you familiar with the technicalities of UA's enrollment? During the brief Lalan conversation, Shinso scoots his chair closer to Izuku and takes his own cookie off of the platter. From the way that their arms bump into each other, Shota can guess they're holding hands under the table. One day they'll tell him. Todoroki shakes his head. No, I'm afraid not, Nezu-sensei. That's certainly understandable, Todoroki-kun, Nezu says as he sets his tea aside and folds his paws together. You see, as a hero school, UA is responsible, legally and financially, for its students. This is in regard to their hero costumes, their support items, their licensure, their internships, and their work studies, of course, but it also covers a thin sliver of guardianship duties when it comes to things like hospital visitation. Now, this also means that UA is both able and prepared to, how should I say this, wedge itself in between a student and a living situation that is less than ideal for them. Are you following me so far? I think so, Todoroki says. Nezu smiles, it's not one of his feral smiles, it's the one he reserves for when he's actually trying to be comforting. What I'm saying, Todoroki-kun, is that Yue has the capability to take custody of you while you're a student here. There are already three students who are wards of Yue, two third years and a second year, and it would not be a hassle to make you the fourth. I understand that the fact that your father is the number two hero will prove to be a slight challenge in the matter, but I'm also confident that Yue's lawyers are the best of the best. Nezu-sensei is also very good at his job. Izuku offers with his own smile to Todoroki, which, at last, is the thing that finally makes Todoroki blink and take a deep breath in. He turns back to Nezu. Where would I be staying? Todoroki glances at Shota. Not with me, problem child, Shota says with a shake of his head. My apartment is full, and one kid is plenty, but most of the teachers have emergency foster licenses and are able to take in wards as necessary. Indeed, Nezu agrees. I have admittedly already started the process, but to go forward any further, I do need your permission, Todoroki-kun. You have it. The words fall from Todoroki's mouth as soon as Nezu stops speaking. Please. Thank you. I'm sorry for the trouble. I don't... I don't want to go back to his house. Nezu nods and pulls out his phone. Then you will not have to. Izuku perks up again, his eyes sliding over to Shota. Can Todoroki-kun stay with us until he has a more official and permanent place? It'll just be a couple of nights, right, Nezu-sensei? Shota pinches the bridge of his nose as Nezu hums an affirmative. If Todoroki's coming over, then that means that Shinso's going to be there as well, something that's confirmed when Shota lifts his gaze to find the purple-haired teen already typing something into his phone. Problem, children. Fine, he sighs. Izuka cheers, grabbing Todoroki's hand and giving it a firm squeeze. Sleepover! Hitoshi, you're coming? Shinso hums. Yeah, Mom said it's fine for tonight, since Recovery Girl healed me this morning. She wants me home tomorrow, though. Good to know we're not asking for my permission anymore. Shota says, with a dry tone as he stares at Shinso. He doesn't even look ashamed. You never said no before, and you can't tell me that you're capable of denying that face. He points at Izuku's beaming smile and crinkled eyes, and yeah, fine, he has a point. Damn kids. You're cooking, then, Shota says, and Shinso just shrugs. I'm sure Todoroki can help. No one can be a worse cook than Izuku. Hey, I resent that. It's true, though. Shota tunes out the bickering and swivels his chair to look at Nezu. Thank you. If I can help in any capacity, please let me know. Nezu smiles and continues typing on his phone, not even bothering to look up. You've already helped quite a bit. You can help further by finishing off this pot of tea and taking the remainder of the cookies home with you. Finally, Nezu pockets his phone and pats Shota on the arm. I'll have a better report for you in the morning. Take care, Aizawa-san. And then he hops off the chair, walks out of the room, leaving Shota to wrangle three emotional and excessively loud teenagers. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 32 of Swallow the Stars. Chapter 33 is next. Hope you all are still enjoying this fic, and as always, thank you so much for listening.